Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today. Brian Nato and Sabatha Perry with you on an absolutely picture-perfect day here at Gulfstream Park in Hollandale Beach. It is closing weekend of the championship meet. It is also Curlin Florida Derby week as well. And uh, those races, if you're not in the loop, they've been drawn, 14 of them on Saturday. Ten stakes, six graded, highlighted, of course, by the finale, the grade one, one million dollar Curlin Florida Derby. It's a very exciting time yeah. here. It's uh it seems like uh, the excitement is actually starting to build a bit more now. And uh, I know you've uh, got the, the line out. You, you got the morning line mm -hmm. out uh, later today. And uh, good work on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, fierceness yeah. at 8 to 5 in yeah. the Curlin Florida Derby. The two-year-old champion looking to make amends for what was definitely a hiccup in the Holy Bowl. And we'll see. Put up or uh, shut up kind of time on Saturday. Yep, it is indeed. But just a stakes action-packed yeah. card. And uh, the rainbow. Rainbow's big. Yeah. Seven Huge. and a quarter today. Eight race card today for you. So in race number three, that will kick off. And uh, Ron Nicoletti is with us all week, uh, which we're oh, yeah. excited about. Look at that. $750,000 in the estimated jackpot. That carryover is massive. Uh, mandatory day is coming as well, but what a big pool to get involved in, and uh, we'll try to steer you in the right direction here. As I mentioned on the eight race card, we're fast, we're firm, the Tapita, of course, as well, but let's get into the opener. We're five on the Tapita here in a $25,000 maiden claimer. Pete's upstairs. He does not have a lot to do today. We like that. Very, very few scratches on the card. I think three in total. The opener is clean and uh, we'll take a look at my early pick five ticket before we get into this opening leg. $18 for me. Uh, you can see three deep here. I Unfortunately, out of three scratches, I had one of them on top. So I scratch into the seven air invasion in race two and it is great as Samantha will uh, agree with me wholeheartedly. Great to get back on the turf today after oh, yeah. just a just a real ugly week last week. There's no doubt about it with the rain down here, but uh, it is what it is. We're back on a firm turf course today. That is phenomenal. And race number three, the four power attack. Race number four, the four subtle faith. And in race number five, I'm not trying to be unlimited potential who's got a lot of that second off a long, long layoff yep. in a field that he is quite frankly supposed to dominate. So we'll see about that. But an $18 play for me. We'll get into this opening leg now. As I mentioned, we'll sprint five on the tapita here and uh, we've kind of got everybody in the group here but we're a little mixed and match you're going to go to the five make the bed of darian rodriguez first time starter which is probably not a bad thing in this kind of group no it's not and i kind of so i made this horse my long shot which i know you have him seven to two yeah. which is fair odds for him here but i knew that they were going to do this that they were just it's very early in the betting but right now they've just hammered the two and i think sure. you're going to get a lot better price on the five than seven to two, I, I think so when it when it comes to it because they're just going to hammer Rohan and Irad. Yeah. They can't help themselves, but uh, make the bed. He's a gelded son of Bushero. Bushero has yep. really just blown everybody away. I think uh, with just how early his horses are, his progeny are coming around, and especially on the Tapita. When Darian Rodriguez ships a horse over here uh, from Tampa, the horse is typically live, and they're they're they've got him in for a quarter. This isn't any right. big ask here, but not also at the bottom either. And that's exactly, a, that's a positive to it it's a homebred too um and this is a barn as samantha said it perfectly when he ships look out and that's why he's two for three with yep. a third with a second so three for three in the exacta uh, i didn't want to pick zano no. either that's why i went with the one racing star down on the inside we've got some speed the debut was good enough at huge odds and i think we're probably a little bit better than we were back then yeah, probably so. And you've already got those races under your belt, yeah. too. And the dirt kind of the dirt at Tampa will certainly have you 100 uh, percent more more fit, I think, than debut. Zaino is going to be a short number. He's the best horse. He's the horse to beat. It does not mean you have to go to the window on him at a very said underlaid yeah. price. That is to be sure. Race number two will start the early pick four. And as I mentioned, we're happy to be back on a firm turf course here in a $50,000 maiden optional claimer. This is the scratch that I alluded to that at least I lost. That's the six crash the gate who I had on top who probably was going to show some speed as well. Let's take a look at Samantha's ticket before we get into this race. Yep, early pick four, a $20 play. I'm singling here. Races three and four, I don't have strong opinions on it at all. Uh, you see in race five, just too deep for me, uh, the one and the six six uh, off the layoff twenty dollars is the play here and i'm um, gonna try to get sweet travels home again here well fourth time would be the charm for you right so yeah. we'll try it here today <laughs> didn't run poorly last time at all it was in for a quarter 
last time with a good second. So, listen, if nothing else, Mike Trombetta is at a very, very good championship meet. Trombo's going to bump him, double him in class today. This is not the saltiest made an optional claimer we've seen, and here he is. Uh, that should be a square number, too. Yeah, well, let's just look at the yep. replay because I felt like this horse uh, just couldn't get by this gate-to-wire winner for Safi, who was – a fifty thousand dollar maiden optional claimer class dropper in right. for twenty five. So how are you going to get by uh, Safi here? And Sweet Travels is the eleven. It was kind of a tougher post position. Now we're going to have Paco Lopez aboard. Uh, I think this horse will sit closer this time around. And hey, there's no speed control in a field like this. And he's kind of flattered a little bit. Homer Jones, who finished third, yeah. won on Sunday. 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 Yep. So yeah. I mean, I just feel like you mentioned it with the field. There's nobody in this field to be afraid. No, it's not the saltiest group we're going to run at this level. I do scratch into the seven air invasion. They tried him four times in a special way, had some good races, had some bad races. He's going to be with some friends today, that's for sure. Yeah, and it was actually a pretty good ride by uh, Vincent Chaminade yeah. last time. He put him into the race, but he just got tired, and, and set was amazing we'll see him on saturday yeah set his evens in the stakes on saturday and he could be about two to five in that he race could yeah he looks it yep honest with a freakish looking debut winner for team cassie uh river walk on the msw drop for the hall of famer bill ma we got a little showed a little life off the layoff last time the worst post in all the racing should get better today you would hope so you would hope so Maybe. don't know if he can run to be fair yeah we might see a, a G next to mm -hmm. his name coming up soon. Might need that. Yes. <laughs> uh, two down, six to go. Eight race Wednesday card here. So we'll take a quick break. When we come back, it's Rainbow Six time. $750,000 in the estimated jackpot. Pool is going to be huge. Stay tuned because Ron's got a ticket. And uh, they're off. past performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with drf all access past performances go to drf.com and use coupon code one free pp for a free single card today And welcome back to Gulfstream today. Brian and Samantha with you on a picture-perfect day here at Gulfstream Park. We hope to see you out here. It's closing week. It's curling Florida Derby week as well. Those 14 races have been drawn. The whole week's been drawn, actually, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. But the big news today is the $750,000 estimated rainbow. Ron's going to be out here with us a little bit later on. He's got the ticket on a pool that has gotten up to big balloons. It has indeed. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Ron's ticket. 43.20. It's the playbook play here. Three deep. Uh, three by three for the third and the fourth race. You see in race number five, the one uh, unlimited potential for Todd Pletcher. Second off a very, very long layoff. Uh, then a three by two by four late pick three uh, in race eight. Uh, he might have his long shot here, but he's got super crunchy. That's my top pick. Legendary Phantom in the mix as well as Foxtrot, Harry, and Halon. 43-20 the play and a uh, good sequence coming up. It is. It's going to start on the Tapita at five furlongs here. These are three rolls and up. It's a $50,000 2L. I want to mention the three Jaeger is going to be a first time gelding. Both Samantha and I land on the same horse here. Power attack for Julie Stormfeld adding Lasix today, trying Tapita today. Uh, so this is a, a horse that we have him on top. He's going to need a race. The more I thought about this, uh, I think this horse is just going to kind of be pointed towards getting a race here and then running. New York bread. Yeah, Monmouth or, or New York bread. And I remember him back in um, 2022 at Monmouth. And he's a, just a big, solid horse and a cool one as well. And Kent Sweezy uh, owns a piece of him. Julie Stormfelt trains. Uh, Lasix goes on for the first time. That right. should help. And you get Irad. But still, I think this horse might need a race. 
Yeah, I mean, the IRAD thing, and he's in for 50, so he is in for a tag. He's yeah. not a guarantee to head up to New York. Um, I, I just kind of felt like a fresh new face in this race was not a bad thing right. um, at all. I'm going to talk about the five three zeros first because we have yeah. a stat on him. Otherwise, I'll forget it. Um, let's show that while I talk. Carlos David here in a Tapita sprint. This horse ran monstrous last time. He's going to be the favorite, barring something unforeseen, okay? He will be the favorite in here, and uh, this is a wild stat now. 44% with sprint favorites on the Tapita. Those are all positives. The negatives are he's one for 23 with eight underneath finishes, and he literally dueled for 56 seconds, 56.43 seconds last time. I don't know if there's only one way to go, and that <laughs> says maybe down to me today. That's why I put him underneath. You've got him even further than that. Let's talk about the three. Jaeger, who you probably came to work today and was very excited <laughs> that he's got the G with the circle on it as a late late adjustment. Yeah, for sure. It, he's, I believe, one of the speed players, and there are a yeah. few of them in oh, here. Yeah. So I think that's why you and I both kind of look towards power attack because yeah. he probably won't be that quick off the blocks, off the layoff. So uh, when you have Paco Lopez aboard, who's been aboard him a bulk of his starts, this horse slow looks like he's going to be put in the game early and let's see how far we can take him. I'll tell you what about Wine Emperor and the Parbu Barn has had a pretty quietly good championship meet with limited starters. If, if, if this horse can work out a trip, um, he's got the firepower to play with these right. from off the pace too. Yeah, he does. And they never bet him. They, they probably won't him. here, but he, he kind of proved himself, I felt like, last time. Absolutely he did. That race puts him at about, you know, three to one on paper. He's not going to be yeah. that because they never bet him. That was a really good effort yeah. last time. Let's go to the late pick five now in race number four. Six on a fast main track here. Phillies and Mayors three and up, which have never won two races. The tag is 12-5. Another scratch here. It's, I think we just have one more. The seven capture this is a long shot scratch out of here. Let's take a look at Samantha's ticket and then we'll get back into this race here. Yeah, it's a $15 play for me here. Just uh, I felt like this race was pretty tough. Then uh, you've got unlimited potential and also the comebacker for uh, Bill Mott. Race six, I'm just going to single the seven, Monopoly Man, and go down with that horse. Race seven, Evidencias. We'll get to this race. Uh, she could be the one that maybe a favorite that uh, might not fire. Uh, race eight, the one I have on top. $15, maybe punch it a couple times and see what we get. All right, here we go back into this fourth race. We're on a fast main track, as I mentioned there, and you are on the five. We got her firmly in the mix. Tear Duck was originally going to be my best bet of the day, and then I realized she's a three-year-old filly, and I just mm -hmm. uh, every fiber of my being can't play those horses on, on March 27th. Yeah, That's it is. It's so tough. Uh, the good news for her is – the rest of the horses in this race are really the four-year-olds I'm talking about yeah. uh, because the lone uh, one of the five-year-olds at Phoenix the six I don't think has got a shot so I think she looks okay mm -hmm. and she's showed some speed at Tampa last time which I like yeah no I don't disagree with it yeah. all and who's who's riding here yeah, I mean, you, get like, I ride. Hey, I ride. you want to ride here that's pretty good because Ramon McGuette's not you know a, a you know, the most familiar name right. on the backstretch. And he's going to reach out for Irad. I think there's intent. She's probably loose in here. Uh, couldn't win for a quarter at Tampa. Now, they were three and up at Tampa. I'll give her credit for that. Yep. Okay. That is a big deal. You've heard us talk about it time and time again, um, that if you've done it at least, and she, you know, she got dueled into submission that yeah. day, basically. Um, so I, she's got that going for her. I don't, I don't like subtle faith, but I, that's where I'm landing here. If nothing else, draw a line through the mile race mm -hmm. her form's pretty darn consistent it is especially yeah but when you when she's at this sprint level that's where she does her best playing yeah. uh you're all three-year-olds here here's amy yeah. the butcher um who's gonna i don't know if it's a drop or not but theoretically it is out of the starter optional claiming ranks against just three-year-olds yeah i i mean it's it's a stab I, in my ticket i i think i'm using everybody but yeah. one horse here it's that kind of race it's that type of race if the three-year-old is going to win that could be the race it's yep. just a little everybody in there is tough to trust I, I, i'll say that race number five kicks off the late pick four here it's a maiden special weight six and a half on a fast main track here for three-year-olds and up let's take a look at my ticket now it won't take a long time to discuss mm -hmm. in here just a six dollar play a bunch of ones in there hopefully right. they're wild today uh that is my long shot in race six we're gonna get tempered a little bit there with a scratch but that is the one classic ballad in race number seven that's my best bet i guess you're against evidentia so well, i think i'd like her but we'll yeah, get to it i think she could give
him a head start and still beat this group in here today. And in race number eight, okay, good. No, no, no one on top at least. Seven, seven on top. Seven, four, one. Halon for me. Um, horse we've tried several times. Here we'll we try, he, he, Halon is is my um, sweet travels. Yeah, thank you. Sweet <laughs> travels. So we'll try him one last time today. Six bucks. You need a five and a one, and that's all you got there. Let's get back now. Um, all right, good. You didn't pick unlimited potential. You got to talk about Prairie Dunes, and we'll see what we get today. Long, long layoff for Bill Mott. Yeah, very, very long. Uh, you look at the race he's coming out of back in last January. Kings Barnes won right. that race. It was your Louisiana Derby winner. Uh, came back in an impressive fashion on uh, Fountain of Youth Day. He. Uh, I, I don't know if this is going to be a race to just get him a little bit more tight. Now, on the 4th of February, there was one work of him, and it was with, uh, or I mean, of March, the 4th of mm -hmm. March. He was working with Skilla, and Skilla needed the race. So, uh, but what I wanted to see from that is just how fit did he look, and he looked about 80 75 yeah. so he doesn't have the longest stride he's not very long-legged uh, but right. they're not asking a lot of him here and then we'll go into unlimited potential uh he's hard to trust well i don't know because okay. you had the winner that day it was a stable mate and he might be going places yeah um, okay. that was off of he's just got so much recency on your horse that's true well let's show the replay yeah, let's show it we showed the replay two back last time before he ran two at keeneland and i kind of the reason i was against him last time was because of kind of what happened here but maybe i'm just being too hard on him here uh he yorkshire men beat him right on the square here now ajiab uh, the five i don't think this horse has a prayer but they might look at him and want to just maybe try him a little bit uh, you just look at the difference in figures between, like, the six and the five. Right. Like, the six could eat the five for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he just got a little short. This is a good race. for the, the, Chad had a firster in there that got a complete terrible trip. He, yeah. Who knows what he could have did. Uh, that was a good race. You know, his stable mate could be going places. Yeah. So, he, you know, he's going to be tough in here. And if your horse is not ready, I will say this. You said working with Skilla. I know she lost, but I think it was Victor Barboza said, you know, if, if, if Skilla wasn't in there, Best Dream would have won by eight lengths or something. like. That. It was a good effort. Yeah. Um, it was best stream beater, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's the Judmont homebred skill of the the close hatches filly, who's you know going to win significant races this yeah. year. So if that's who Bill Mott, the Hall of Famer, is pairing up uh, Prairie Dunes with, maybe we it's got something sign, yeah. here. Yeah, and you get a bigger, tougher, stronger version of him at four now. Bill's 19% off this kind of elongated layoff, yeah. too. So I always th the other thing I say about these horses too, you know, obviously we don't know what happened, but something relatively major right. probably happened or maybe it just took a while um i always kind of think maybe the screws are a little tighter because of that you yeah, know i agree so, I, Completely. Mean, I, I got them in second i don't need any more than, than than those two but i'll go down with the heavy favorite race number six now late pick three at a flat one turn mile on the main track these are optional claimers the state breads the florida breads going at it here the two lasso should be our last scratch of the day and you are going to the outside to the monopoly man I had a lot of trouble with this race. Yeah. I felt like all of them um, are just really not that great. But let's look at Monopoly Man right. because I I wanted to toss this horse immediately because if you win on the slop or you lose on the slop, I tend to cross it out. But this horse took a lot of mud. He's the six horse here. Danny Gargan uh, sent this horse out, and he's not one that's going to get one cranked up for first or second time. He takes his time with horses, but I felt like this is a horse, the Monopoly Man, that ran a really strong race. Now, practically dark, look at one to two, the eight horse, the savvy horse, and that horse was just not that great at all. But I feel like this horse ran really well and pretty professional, and he's got the recency one-turn mile race. Yeah, I got no edge. knocks on him. Yeah. He's got a good post here yeah. as, as well. He does face winners for the first time. Uh, that was open, you know, made an optional claimer. So as a Florida bred, he doesn't dangle for the tag. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a lot. This is my long shot. So, you know, okay. you're, you're kind of you're just picking a better horse than mine. But the same kind of idea here, because classic ballad has been running against open company Gunsong. Uh, I know she's a filly. OK, I mean, we need to mention that with the one classic ballad. I don't know. Gunsong might win the Oaks on Saturday for Mark Hennig. We're down inside. We get Lasix. I, I don't know. And Pete Walder, we trust here. That's yeah. I like that race two back. 
Uh, yeah, the race two back was... Oh, you got her in the mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got her second. Uh, she tries hard. She was just way in over her head last time. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, uh, and I wonder if that race will come back to her a little bit. If I was going to, you know, double my ticket, um, th she would be the next one I put yeah, in. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. I mean, you certainly can't play Raw Ready, uh, who no. we thought had a world of ability and it has just been a complete... Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. He's just been very disappointing, and both starts off the layoff. And you would have thought last time he was, I think, all three of our best bets that day. Yeah, and he just was. No, and he was yeah. supposed to go forward in a big way, and he went backwards in a huge way. So we like him. He's a cool horse. We we rooted for him, but you just sometimes you gotta you gotta sign the, the papers and say we're all done here. Yeah. And I think that's probably that's me today. Secret Lover is kind of sort of a better version of my horse, my long shot, and that he's he is dropping out of out of graded races and mm -hmm. or not or open races excuse me and then braun you've tried braun a few times the other ruben sierra yeah i have uh i don't have much to right. add other than maybe he's the the cutback is going to work uh on the, but his one dirt race showing it was stakes race what do you do yeah. i don't know yeah, we'll find out yeah. uh, a little more today. Race 7 kicks off the late double. It's an optional claimer. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and up here. Again, that flat one-turn mile. The late pick 5 today is all turf and dirt, by the way. So that's is, pretty yeah. darn cool. And, uh, okay, oh, you did pick the one. I did, yeah. Oh. Yeah, right, I was I feel better. No, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I just, uh, well, let's show a replay. Yeah, she's and my best bet. Yeah, she's mine too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I got a little flack of that on Twitter for picking a, a horse that will be a short price, but you've never done that before, though. Oh my gosh, how I would never? Uh, okay, she was the only horse out of this race to close. I, I talked to you about this on Sunday. You look at the track variants at Aqueduct; yeah. they have been like plowed fields, 36, 38. The way she ran, I mean, the way that she's going to transfer to this Coldstream Park dirt course, she's going to feel like she's running on the Belt Parkway, I yeah. think. And not only that, there's plenty of speed to set her up. The speed is not any great shakes. No. We'll leave it at that. And she's got some class to her. Mm -hmm. She stakes place. Listen, if Team Clement's going to ship her down I-95 a thousand miles, you know, they're not here to... To, to hit the beach. I mean, she's here <laughs> to pick up a big purse. Yeah, she um, could run on the beach, though. She probably could. She <laughs> just did that in she South Ozone yeah. Park there. Um, so, you know, she's going to be a short number. I. She's just simply put, sometimes we say this, and it's, it sounds silly, she's just faster and better than these, these horses. I yeah. think it's as simple as that. We've got the underneath exact uh, uh, reverse. You're going to go set. If they let sense you left gets loose, get loose, maybe she gets brave. I, I don't see it happening, though. No, I, I really don't either uh, just because th I think she's a little bit more dressed up on that Tapita effort and yeah. that she just took she beat hey hey Paula come on yeah, and the horse that beat her, Abadancia, who, you know, she could be okay, but she was coming off a very, very long laugh, making yeah. her first start in the United States. And, yeah. you know, she I don't think she's any great shake. So, right. um, yeah, there's just a couple horses you got to say, well, I, if that's who our main ch my main challenger is, Abadancia is in a good spot. Yeah. Hey, Herman Walensky's had a really good year, Herman Sam. They claim the two founders. Day. She'll be a nice price. What do they do? Immediately get her back to the dirt. Um, she'll be a square price underneath. Maybe we'll try to break things up with a chalky. Uh, they, they did have her entered uh, in a stakes sprint mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago. And I, I, my comments on her, this is going to be way too sharp. But they scratched her, and now she's yeah, now here she at a mile. mile. So yeah. that's good, yeah. Yeah, those guys have done good work. Lure her in, who's not with them anymore. We'll see him on Saturday. But they claimed him out west and brought him back to, to win a stakes race. Yeah. So they, they know the score, to be sure. Race number eight wraps up this card on a firm turf course here. A maiden optional claimer will go a mile. It's clean. And you are going to go down inside with Super Crunchy. And uh, we're going to show them why? Yeah, I'll show you why. Because this is a horse that got in a hellacious yeah. speed duel. Just the whole way was just pressing with these two. Now, Iris' dream we'll see a little bit later schooling yep. um, and running the Florida Derby. But Super Crunchy's the one here. And he did so much work. And he f completely fried Dunes of Gold. Dunes of Gold is just going to drop back. There's Reggae Man. I, I wanted to point him out just in case people do want to play him. He didn't do much except pass tiring horses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this horse, Super Crunchy, kept trying, and I like that. I know he was a beaten favorite that day, but Iris' dream was like a mad madman yeah. on the grass course. Now we'll see him on the dirt, but Super Crunchy didn't give it away. 
No, and he might get loose in here. The question is, what does Oconee life right to yeah. his outside putting blinkers on do? We'll see, but he's going to, I don't think he's going to be working. They went 46 flat that day. Yeah. That's these horses. They, they, they shouldn't be doing that, right. simply put. Um, I, I'm going to just give Halon a, a, maybe, I guess, one last try. Um, I thought he ran pretty well last night. Crystal Quest, we talked about this yeah. race the other day. Comes back to win. Second time, lay six. We'll just take a little bit of a shot in here. I think it's a good post, too. I think it's a really good post for him. And if they want to get involved early, he's going to be sitting back licking his chops in there. Yeah. So you've got him in the mix. Uh, the six is... Foxtrot, Foxtrot Harry, I had a big plus on, albeit on the Tapita. Uh -huh. He's another potential pace player, though. Yeah, he is. And now second start uh, off, uh, just second start now for a Mike Maker. And I think that will just kind of help get him a bit tighter. But he, he does move up yeah. in class. Much better post today for the four. Never say never. Unfortunately, yeah. anybody who likes him, you get Irad. And your 23 to 1 is long gone, yeah. even though he should be about 12 to 15 to 1. Hmm. But that's it. So we've got eight of them for you, of course. Uh, we got the lightning round, though, before we leave you. And let's take a look at that. Uh, last time, well, I guess we'll do it one more time next week. But uh, last time we'll do it on a Wednesday. I know that. And let's just kind of recap. The big news here now is, let's, let's check this out, because... Jose Ortiz in the jock standings had been threatening, 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 and all of a sudden he's one ahead. I, I got to give him credit. He's had a hell of a meet, heck of a meet. Can I say that? I don't know. <laughs> well, you did, so it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, he really, really has. Uh, you know, Paco was gone on Sunday. I think he won four races at Tampa. Yeah. Uh, Jose Ortiz has just been picking up the pieces. It's Irad's long gone, but it will be fun to watch these two yes. for the podium because they're both on live horses yes, this weekend. Yes, absolutely. Jose Ortiz highlighted by, of course, Didia and the Pegasus Philly yep. Mare Turf, but that's not over yet because he's got Conquest Warrior uh, in the Curlin, Florida Derby on Saturday. And Paco's and, got Hades. And Paco's <laughs> has got Hades, so one of the three the three heavy favorites that I would assume by post time will all separate themselves, and they've both of those guys have a great chance to end their meet which has been huge with a real, real positive. Let's take a look now at the trainer standings because this has long been decided as well. Safi will win another one, I guess. I, I would think, well, I don't want to say it, but Todd's probably got second locked up, but there's a lot going on underneath as well. Yeah, Cassie and D'Angelo yep. both vying. I mean, hats off to Brian Lynch. I think he's got some live runners this weekend, sure and I does. hope he can secure the fourth place finish because he has half the starts than yeah. the top four have. Tumbarumba coming back, yep. and as we mentioned already, set for Mark Cassie. Jose D'Angelo's got some bullets as well, and of course the Hall of Famer Todd Pletcher uh, is, is chock full of live runners on Curl and Florida Derby Day, as is Safi Joseph Jr. as well. All right, let's take a look now because this is uh, th the big news, as we kind of said, a lot going on Saturday, but mandatory day uh, as well. And that's going to be Sunday, March 31st, closing day. Yep, it'll be exciting. It's all dirt, all turf races in this sequence. It'll be a, a lot of fun. Sure will. Now that's assuming, and that is a big assumption, that we go four racing days without anybody hitting this. Regardless, it'll be a big pool on Sunday, but that number you see there is if it does go on hit for four straight yep. racing days. This is a good one here, this Exacta promo that we've kind of been having throughout, and uh, th this is a pretty good one. You can share up to $20,000 in this promo. Yeah, Exactathon, and yep. uh, it's uh, just in a pool basis, and this is with Express Bet, so you can sign up there, but this is just on Florida Derby Day with Exactas that yeah. day. Yeah, so check that out on the website, the details and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we we'll have a lot of promos this weekend, to be sure. Sure. How about your best bet today? Evidence is. Oh, it is. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. too. Same with me, actually. <laughs> How about your long Oh, wait. Bet? Wow. Oh. I did Monopoly, there man. There you go. I did a video about Evidence is. Whoa. All right. <laughs> Surprise myself now. sometimes. There we go. Monopoly, man. There <laughs> there I am. I promise you. It's Evidence is. <laughs> How about your long shot? Uh, in the first race, uh, the five horse. Okay. Well. Make the bed. Six to one now. Six to one now. A lot of a lot of heavy lifting going before we get there. Twenty six minutes in the opener. I am uh, a little better than that, though. There is a scratch in race six. I'm on the inside with the Philly Classic Ballad taking on the males there. That's it. We got eight of them for you. The legend Ronnie's going to be out with me a little bit later on. Out with us, I should say, a little bit later on. It's closing week. It's curling Florida Derby week. We've got eight races. It's fast. It's firm. We got Pete Aiello upstairs as well to guide you through the very few scratches and changes. A late pick five of all dirt and turf. Lot to look forward to. We'll be back here for the opener shortly.